Let's go. She's so bad, she never met Sam. Yeah. I don't even care, I never had manners. No way. Yeah. Had a couple years, y'all must have stand. I do. Hey, sit while you rap, cause you just can't stand. Yeah. It to my head, it gave me danger. I go in and the girls go crazy. Would you believe me if I told you that all the visual effects, sound effects, and pretty much editing magic that you just saw was all done inside of CapCut? A couple hours ago, I, I probably wouldn't have believed me either. I don't know how CapCut does it, but they just keep outdoing themselves in these updates, these edits, and new features that they keep adding to the software. If you're keen to see these features and how they can work in your edits, let's jump right in. So this first feature is camera subject tracking. And there is an extremely famous and popular brand that did this in one of their TV adverts, but you can use it for anything from music videos to vlogs to uh, car videos there's just endless effects from tv commercials under video we have this new feature called camera tracking and we can choose when we enable that the face a body a hand or a custom area that we want to track if none of these three are in it. if i scrub through here you'll see that our face stays relatively center throughout the, the whole clip now i would say fit to canvas because if you don't you're going to get these portions where uh, the video kind of runs out while it's trying to keep the subject center and then i also like to enable lock subject size or object size and then if i disable that and disable blur canvas you can see that the background is just black so i like to leave that in case there is any area that spills over a better way to represent this, I think, just because there's a lot of movement in that previous clip is here's a jump roper jumping up and down while our camera stays static, right? If we go ahead and enable camera tracking, our camera kind of locks on his face and moves with his face up and down as he jumps up and down. The second feature is a 4K filter. So if you just go to filters, go to pro, it should be the first one. You can go ahead and drag that onto your whole timeline. Now, just a preface, I don't like making this 100%. I think it's a little bit too intense. So I drag it to between 50 to 60. Right now it's on 60. It's so subtle. If we look at this image, that's the before and that's the after. The before is something that a noob colorist would do and the after is like, I'd be confident taking this to a client and putting it on TV. And the next one is sound effects. If you go to audio and we can just drag music up and go to sound effects, it's gonna drop it down. I've been using CapCut for a long time and whenever I would search whoosh, I would not get the incredible whoosh sounds I hear now. Let me just play like two or three. Like that's a really nice sounding whoosh. That too. It just feels like they've upgraded the sound effects. So when I scroll down here, you've just been seeing the top off of the video. Every sound effect that you hear in this sequence was from CapCut. You know, when this guy kind of drops down, the camera shutter sounds, the laser sound, the rolling shutter. And I love that it's just built into the software. I didn't have to go to a, another platform to get it. It's just built in. I searched what I wanted and I was able to find it. So definitely an upgrade in sound effects from CapCut. Uh, if you want to be double sure that you're just not using something that could get copyrighted, go to your commercial tab and turn that on. And it's going to allow you to see all the commercially available sound effects that you can use without being flagged for copyright. All right, so this fourth one is sound effects or rather sound filters. And this has been around for a while, but CapCut released a whole bunch of new ones that I think are incredible. Let me show you what I mean. You'll see in our soundtrack, I've broken up these little portions and duplicated them. So essentially just hold on alt, duplicate, create a new portion, and then drag a couple of frame handles so it's a little bit longer and then fade those in. It just helps to smoothen the effect. Now on this, you can see that our character is on the phone. So I thought, what if we could find a filter that sounded like he's listening to something on the phone? And naturally CapCut had a filter called on the phone. What this does is let me disable this. I'll re-enable the normal track and then show you what it sounds like. Hear this out. Never mess in. See back. Yeah. I don't All right, so that's without the filter and then with the filter. Yeah. It's almost like now he's hearing the song in the phone. In film terms, this is called diegetic sound. It's essentially sound that um, the character is hearing in their world while we're hearing it with them. Imagine someone diving into a pool and going underwater. The distortion applies and then it sounds like that person is hearing the music underwater. Uh, the other example from where I use it in the film is when they're in the car. I think it's really cool because it sounds like they're hearing it in the car. Feature number five is new masking features, which we needed this for a long time, CapCut, so thank you. And it's not only new masking features that when you click a clip, you can go to mask and then add a mask. They apply to effects as well. So if I go to basic and you can see under effects, we'll, we'll talk about freestyle graffiti just now. If I go to the edit icon, I now have an option to select mask and then choose between a text, brush, or pen mask. Those are the new mask features. 
All I did was add a mask, create a brush mask, drag over our subject just like that, just like a painting, and then CapCut automatically identifies our subject. Something I didn't see while recording is the mask is automatically tracked to our subject, which is super cool. Then what I did was I inverted that. So I only applied it to the background, not our subject. I used the same thing for this one. I applied the effect, went to mask and applied the brush and just dragged it over my car and then CapCut, you know, selected the car for me. Um, and then I selected inverse. The other way looks cool as well. I just think having the background have the effect instead of our car looks quite cool. A very proud mention of today's video sponsor, who is One Browser. One Browser is enabling creators like you and I to make money from our videos. And it's super, super simple. Let me tell you how. Just by mentioning One Browser in your videos, you make $7. In addition, if your video hits a thousand views or more, you get 10 additional dollars. That's 17 potential dollars just from mentioning one browser. What exactly is one browser though? One browser is a VPN powered browser designed for privacy and security. It lets you access any website without restrictions, stay invisible online, which means no tracking or digital footprints, manage multiple accounts on one platform and use built-in VPN or proxies to change locations instantly. I know content creation can be costly and sometimes it just doesn't feel rewarding. Well, this is an easy way to make some free money. The best part, you can make a video a month. So you're not limited to once a year, make one every month and you'll get potentially $17. Also, if your video performs well, you get access to special contracts and deals. If you wanna sign up and you're interested in learning some more, click the link in the description about one browser and sign up, create a video, mention one browser, and then you could have $17 in your account. This next feature is a video and text tool that I've done some manual tutorials on the channel that have pulled hundreds of thousands of views. CapCut just made it from something that's manual into automatic. Let me show you what I mean. So click on your clip, go to mask, and then you'll see this new text mask where you can then add any text that you want. So the song says A, so I just thought it would be fitting to add A. You're a genius, you're a genius. You're a you then get the option to change your font, your font size, you know, even feathering. I could change this text to anything we want and we would have that text and our video inside of our text. So this next effect isn't a new effect. I just used it in this video and it's something used all the time in film and edits. Here's how to do it. You're gonna add a transform keyframe on the first frame of your video clip and then go to the end frame, add another transform keyframe. Now on your first frame, you're gonna increase the size by a whole lot. So let's make that 200% and reframe our subjects just to be in the middle. So now when we play that, you can see that our subjects stay relatively the same size, but our background distorts and warps out. This next one is called Glow 2. It's an effect that you can find in video effects just by searching Glow 2 and dragging it onto your timeline. Why well, I like this one over Glow 1 and 3 is it just looks better. <laughs> it's quite simple. You can also change things like your glow and your glow size. And with it, you can see that there's some halation around our highlights. Highlights are just the brightest portions of your video. And if I disable it, you can see that our video is overall not as glowy. So I think it's just a really cool effect that you can test on your videos to see if it adds a benefit to how it looks. This next effect is called Freestyle Graffiti, which I've applied to a couple different clips. In this one right here, where the graffiti looks like it's behind him, and this one in the intro. I went to Video Effects in my effects panel, searched graffiti, and there it is right there, Freestyle Graffiti. Again, if you want to even pro effect, click on that, go to mask and create a brush mask around your subject. And then it's only going to apply the effect behind your subject and not actually on your subject. This next one is pretty much exactly the same as freestyle graffiti, just a different look. It's in your video effects, apply it to your clip and then select your brush tool and mask out whatever subject you want to. And it's going to apply a really cool doodle expose feature into your background. This next feature is called phantom clone. And I think it really does make the intro of the sequence. Basically what it does is it clones our subjects, they appear from behind the subjects and then move on top and land down in a really cool motion. Something super popular for speed ramp and specific edits. Why I didn't apply this to the specific clip is because I wanted the effect to carry over. You can see it does a bit of a warp effect onto this next one. If I just applied it to this clip, the shake wouldn't carry over and it wouldn't transition us into the next clip. So play around with your timing. Uh, I really like just applying this on top of two clips to form a bit of a transition. 
This next one is called Apparate 2. It can be found in your body effects under clone. There it is right there. The preview gives a great representation of what it does. I really like how it's used in the sequence where we're moving into our subjects and their kind of clones are I guess, apparating outside of them. And this last one is called Say Cheese. Oh, I love it so much. It it could be perceived as a little bit cheesy, mainly because the CapCut logo is right on the front of the camera, but I just love it so much. It's found in video effects under cheese. If you go to your basic tab in the effect, you can change things like speed and you can use your speed tab to make sure that the effect finishes before you change clips uh, or the beat drops of your song. So use speed to time that effect uh, to your song. Let me know what you think of the sequence and let me know if there's anything you don't understand from the video. I'd love to share it with you. I'm not trying to gatekeep any of these cool features, but yeah, I really, really thought they were super cool and I couldn't wait to share them with you. You're a genius. You're a genius.